What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out WWE wrestlers who broke character to check on their injured opponent. You've seen it a few times. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes wrestlers do what they can to make sure that, you know, if they see that their opponent is visibly hurt, that, you know, they try to subtly, you know, make sure that their opponent is good without actually doing it, breaking kayfabe within the match. And as you should, for the most part, um their objective is to make it seem as if someone is you know you know getting hurt but also trying to protect them as much as possible without once again breaking kayfabe within the match so you know even though they're opponents to everybody else on the outside looking in you know they're actually there to make sure that they don't get hurt too bad so we're gonna check this out should be a good one let's get right into this one man for a lot of years folks austin's in trouble though also hung up there by Triple H. Ten times wrestlers broke character to check on their opponent. Number 10, LA Knight, SummerSlam 2024. Yep. Logan Paul is still extremely new to the crazy world of pro wrestling. This means that his opponents must work carefully with him to make sure that he's safe in the ring. Now, this isn't to say that Logan is poor in the ring, as that simply isn't the case. It's oh, just a case that good. Logan often goes too high risk and sometimes has rather unfortunate landings. At the 2024 SummerSlam event, Logan defended the US title against LA Knight, and in the match, Logan performed a visually spectacular springboard moonsault onto Knight, who was standing outside of the ring. Logan had a truly horrific landing, and without hesitation, Knight broke yeah. character to check on Logan. This was the correct thing to do, and Knight once again showed the world that he's a total pro in the ring. Yeah. Now, this wasn't the only time in the well-received match where Knight match broke too. character, as he top rope superplex saw Logan have yet another unfortunate landing, and Knight once again would check on his opponent. Mm -hmm. Number 9, Brock Lesnar Elimination As you should. Chamber 2022. The 2022 Elimination Chamber match featured one of the most insane spots ever as Brock Lesnar delivered a devastating bro. F5 onto Austin Theory Ridiculous, from the top of the chamber bro. pod. This spot looked like something out of a WWE video game and Facts. naturally, due to the dangers of the spot, there was a major concern that Theory could have been seriously hurt. Hell yeah. Lesnar was incredibly careful with Theory after the spot and Lesnar even hid his face for a brief second during the pin attempt and this was likely the exact moment that Lesnar was making sure that Theory was okay. But Lesnar didn't stop there as when he was exiting the chamber structure after winning the match, Lesnar informed the referee that he needed to go back into the structure to ensure that Theory was okay. Number eight. Yeah, bro, that was uh, that was a crazy spot, bro. F5 from one of the Elimination Chamber pods. I mean, the room for error is zero. <laughs> like, this is how much right there. Just... It's, there's no room for error, bro. Chris Jericho, Raw 2001. One of the most acclaimed matches in Raw history took place in 2001, as Triple H and Stone Cold Steve Austin took on Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho. The match is known for the sheer quality of the action, and it's also known for Triple H delivering the performance of a lifetime. It's well documented just how Triple H was injured in the match, and it was pretty much a fluke mm -hmm. accident. In hindsight, some may argue that the match should have been called off, yet Triple H would probably counter this argument by stating that the injury took the match to the next level. A game wrestling a huge match with a torn quadricep was no Crazy, laughing matter, bro. and the fact that he finished the match on one working leg spoke volumes to how Crazy, incredible he was bro. as a performer. Oh yeah, nah, Triple H, he, he, he is a different pedigree no pun intended that no pun was intended yeah nah he he's different i mean you get into that wrestling business you kind of have to be different bro like my man's out here wrestling with a torn quad it's not the first time that's happened either like it's just to keep going the amount of pain you're in to fight through that impressive Jericho in particular was a total professional in the match as he was consistently checking on the game and it could clearly be seen when the infamous Walls of Jericho on the announce table spot took place. Jericho would ask the game if he was okay which was the right thing to do as the idea of delivering a leg based submission move to a man who just tore his quad is completely wild. Number 7 Mr. Kennedy Raw 2007 John Cena was established as a face of the company in 2007. Cena was the biggest wrestling star in the world and WWE had made the right call by making Cena the guy. Unfortunately for WWE and Cena, this all went wrong when Cena was injured in a match against Mr. Kennedy on Raw. Cena would get hurt following a hip toss and Cena's facial expressions instantly mm -hmm. changed as he realized that he'd just been seriously hurt. Kennedy would do this. a great job in keeping Cena safe afterwards, and it's evident that Kennedy was breaking character and talking to Cena to making sure he was okay. 
Cena's injury would be a torn pec, uh -huh. and this is an incredibly serious injury, so Cena was expected to be out for an extended period of time. This was the first instance of Super Cena surfacing yeah. as he managed to recover in just a matter of months and yeah. make his dramatic return at the two. That still, I don't know what type of medicine they gave this motherfucker, bro, but there's no a torn peck. And my man was back in time for the Royal Rumble. One of the greatest Royal Rumble returns that a lot of people were not expecting. That shit was crazy. 2008 Royal Rumble. Number six, Bubba Ray Dudley, Raw 2002. Whilst there's no arguing that kayfabe and staying in character is important in wrestling, sometimes a wrestler's safety and well-being oh, yeah. becomes the focus, and the wrestler is forced to break character. This was the case in 2002, as Kevin Nash was injured in a major match on Raw. During a 10-man tag match, Nash oh, yeah, was tagged I'm in, and after performing some basic moves, Nash charged at Bubba Ray Dudley, who was on the apron. However, upon doing this, Nash fell into the ground and yep. Nash completely tore his quad. Tore the match quad. was quickly changed on the fly so Nash could receive immediate medical attention. Bubba Ray Dudley was phenomenal following the injury as he didn't just break character to make sure Nash was okay, he even spoke to Nash in the corner and virtually shielded him from further action. Mm -hmm. Bubba Ray has always been known for keeping kayfabe intact, yet even he realized that his responsibility to keep Nash safe was the new focus, and he truly did an outstanding job. Number 5, Walking, Edge, the Over face. the Limit 2010 One of the top matches on the 2010 Over the Limit match card was Edge vs Randy Orton. The match went off the rails when Orton legitimately injured his shoulder yep. while setting up for an RKO. Orton had dislocated his shoulder and the match needed to end immediately. After a few awkward seconds, Edge and Orton had a brief conversation and this is where Edge decided to exit the ring. This allowed Orton and the referee to have a discussion about Orton's status and this was when the new improvised countout finish was put together. When Orton and Edge are delivering the new finish on the outside of the ring, Edge constantly checks on Orton to make sure that his injury hasn't got any worse. Jeez. Additionally, his strikes are noticeably weak, and he's mainly using the physicality as an excuse to communicate with a fellow WWE legend. Number 4, Lee. Once again, it's, it's, you're doing this on the spot. Someone's arm, shoulder gets dislocated. Now you have to change the match on the fly. You can't really do what you would normally do because they're injured. He's one-armed at this point. So, you know, once again, being a wrestler, professional wrestler, you got to know what you're doing. And you got to know how to protect your opponent as well. Lita Survivor Series 2001. And there's a reason that Lita is considered to be one of the greatest female wrestlers of all time. And even early on during a WWE run, she was consistently the best worker in the women's division. Mm -hmm. At the 2001 Survivor Series event, a six-pack challenge took place to crown a new WWE Women's Champion. During the match, Jazz would take a bump through the ropes, and in a scary moment, it looked like the talented style was going to land straight on her head yeah. as her feet got tangled in the ropes. Thankfully, Lita was able to catch Jazz and safely bring her to the ground. Lita would then turn her face towards Jazz to make sure that she was perfectly okay. Number 3, Sasha Banks and Peyton Royce, Elimination that Chamber was, 2019. The 2019 because I mean once again shit, how many times we've we seen people get hurt just diving through the rope so she was at the right place at the right time made sure she was good and you know continue on the match elimination chamber pay-per-view featured a chamber match to crown the inaugural WWE women's tag team champions the match received rave reviews yet there were some close calls with spots in the match that could have led to a serious injury during one spot in the match, Peyton Royce flipped over the ropes onto Bailey and Sasha Banks. As Royce was coming down, it became apparent that Bailey oh, was going to yeah. be kicked in the head. Uh -huh. So at the last second, Banks smartly put a hand in Bailey's face to cushion uh -huh. the blow. Although Bailey and Banks weren't opponents in the match, this save was great to see, and Bailey instantly checked on Banks to make sure that she was okay. When it comes to Royce, when she moved Bailey ahead of the next spot, she managed to get extremely close to her face. So this was likely the point in which Royce just wanted to check on her opponent and perhaps apologize for the rough landing number two john hey, cena that was that was that was quick thinking on sasha at that moment to put her hand there like just to make sure she's good extreme rules 2011 but john cena had a reputation for calling spots during his full-time run in wwe yet cena was also known for being safe in the ring and making sure his opponents were at ease at all times at the 2011 extreme rules pay-per-view cena took on the miz and john morrison in a steel cage match for the wwe title and the highlight of the match saw Morrison deliver a starship pain onto Cena and Miz from the top of the steel cage. The spot looked brutal and Cena, who's the ring general in the match, would purposely land on top of Morrison following the spot and this allowed Cena to check on him. This was extremely brief and once Cena was aware that Morrison was perfectly okay, Cena moved away from Morrison and continued selling the spot. And number one, Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 26. 
The matches between mm. Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker great are match. legendary. Great, Their final great, one-on-one great, matchup great, took place at WrestleMania match. 26. The two went all out for the match, and the match featured a spot which saw HBK deliver a moonsault from the ropes onto the dead man who was lying prone on the announce table. HBK's in-ring skills are well established, and mm -hmm. due to the danger of the spot, HBK had a genius way of making sure The Undertaker was okay. After landing, HBK would adjust his position, and he did this in order to get closer to The Undertaker and the referee. He did this in such a smart way, and yeah. it looked as if he was selling both the impact, as well as taking in the high of the momentum of the Woo! spot. This would allow him to not just check on The Undertaker when the camera cut to the replay, but he instantly would be able to overhear the conversation between The Undertaker and the referee. Well, there you have it, folks. Take hey, man. This is, this is what you love to see, you know, like these guys and girls out here making sure that, you know, their opponents are good. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to go out there, sell it, make it look as real as possible. But if there's some type of injury, got to make sure they good or potentially a crazy spot just to check up on that. You good? All right, man, let's keep it going. You know, that's just part of being a professional in the business you know what i'm saying you don't want to actually put your opponent at you know risk legitimately to the point where they could potentially get seriously hurt or potentially lose their life you know it's it's a dangerous dangerous sport man so love seeing these like type of videos because it it puts things in perspective when you go back and watch some of these matches so comment down below let me know some other wrestling content i want me to check out appreciate all love sport road 2 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace